My name is Preston. I'm going to be talking to you guys about construction related deaths. I am in the construction industry. I've been working there for two years. I have seen uh, quite a bit of things that's happens out in the construction. A lot of things you may see, or you will see in this PowerPoint, that I have seen firsthand. Some of these, uh, they're not graphic at all. It's just a lot of these are just stupid incidents that some people do. So what I'm going to talk to you today about is the three major deaths that construction workers face. One being falls one being electrocutions, and one being struck by. Most of you guys probably won't do or be on any construction projects in your life. Um, you may walk by one, but it's best to know this, just to keep yourself safe and just in case you are near one. So none of you guys want to be one of the fatalities or any incidents that happens on a job site. Because it does happen that the public does get hurt. So overall, that's in construction. Just the OSHA standards, we have 4,821 deaths that die on the job, not just construction. In construction, we have a little bit less, but still, that's 92 people that die a week, 13 a day. It's way too many when we have regulations in place for safety of our workers. But in construction, we do have 899 deaths per OSHA. That was in 2014. 2015, it actually went higher, which is against our rate. Usually, we are on a downturn, had less deaths a year, but for some reason, last year, we had a increase, so we're trying to fix that in the upcoming months. So the first one I told you talking about was falls. You cannot have a, a, a fear of heights in construction. You're going to be working hundreds, even thousands of feet in the air. You can't be afraid to, to walk out of there on the ledge. But there are safety precautions for that. Um, one is fall protection, so a, a harness that you're going to wear. It'll have loops on the end that you'll tie to a cable where you'll be suspended, where you won't have to fall. Or you won't fall a thousand feet in the air, you'll only fall like 10 feet. Then someone comes to pull you up and complains about it. But nevertheless, we do have ways to stop yourself from falling, whether it's safety nets, harnesses, like I said, guardrails, which most of you guys are used to seeing around guardrails. Um, but there are some ways that people are able to get around that, and such as very smart people here, you can tie two ladders together to get higher. That's pretty smart. Or you know, does anyone want to get on this very unstable looking, I don't know what that is. Looks like they just <laughs> built it in their backyard and said, let's build this pole. It's just not very safe. He's not tied off. He can just fall backwards. The wind blows. Who knows whether that thing's even stable. It's just a lot of things that can happen in construction. And you don't want to be a part of Be those guys up there. And the managers, whoever's on there, shouldn't even tell these guys to even be thinking about doing some of that. But, it may come to a shock to you guys that electric electrocution is our second one. We do have 74 deaths out of the 809 in construction being electrocution. A lot of them are nothing like you know, coming into contact with high voltage lines, things like that. It's more like stupid people are climbing on ladders next to voltage lines or whatever. Or some people just, uh, which I've seen, is pull the cords out from the wall. And instead of actually pulling it from the wall, they just yank the cord. And that stretches the uh, cables inside and they get shot that way. I've seen that on almost all of my projects that I've been on. It's the frayed cords that we just get lazy. We don't feel like going all the way to the receptacle. We'll just yank it out there. Um, but there are, again, proofs of getting around there. We got GFCI. Does anyone know what GFCI is? No. That's a ground fault circuit interrupter. That is one of the things that you have on your receptacles that you press a button and it has to turn back on your power. So if, let's say you're using your hair dryer and it comes in contact with water, it automatically shut off where you won't get electrocuted. It's nice to have, and that's usually in homes, but we are forced to have them out there in the job field, so our safety will be number one in there. And um, in general, this is the rule that we all have to follow, that we do have to have that out there no matter what, just for our employees' safety. And our last, Look at people just being up there for it. This is what I was talking about for the cords that get frayed. I see that almost every cord I walk by. Um, usually, the guys like to go out there and just tie some tape over top of them. Go, oh, they'll fix it. That's not going to work over time. It'll just get frayed and I'll probably shock you most likely. This guy again, I don't know what he's doing up here. He's just an idiot. He just looks like he's going to want to fall off, and he's touching me. I don't know if it's live or dead, but you never want to touch any type of electrical equipment whether you know it is live or dead. So this guy is just asking for a very convenient death. Lattice is struck by, which is 73 out of 899 deaths, that being usually head traumas. Most of you guys know that hard hats are required on job sites. That is 
is a OSHA regulation, and we have to have some way to protect a, a an employee or a public person that comes by. A lot of people don't like to wear hard hats. I don't like to wear hard hats. They're very uncomfortable. I have hair that does not like to stay underneath the hard hat and it likes to pop off. Uh, some people, they just don't like hard hats at all because it feels uncomfortable or gets hot. So we end up taking it off. But again, that takes safety concerns out, and which that is why we have them in place. But yeah, this is what it feels like when my hair gets longer. <laughs> I won't be able to uh, put on a hard hat. I don't believe it's going to save them from anything that will fall on his head. It'll save his nice hair, but it won't save his head. Or if you just don't want to wear hard hats, so why don't you just grab a brick from the yard, put it on your head, and start walking by? That'll save you for something. Um, but in overall, I've told you guys about the deaths and falls, the electrocutions, and then the struck fires in my industry. It is truly sad that we have 899 deaths that happen a year. We're trying to stop that. And it's, it's hard to stop when people will always find a way to get around our rules. But that's one way where we as managers or we as people that we have to learn to get around them.